What's up guys, NicheLTube here back with another video and today we're going to be looking at an innovative upcoming technology of the future, Hyperloops, the public transport system of the future. Now I'm sure you've all heard of Hyperloops through social media or you've heard it in the news or you've seen some progress in some companies that have been innovating this. So what is a Hyperloop? Essentially, a Hyperloop is a modern, innovative, futuristic take on public transport. It is the latest advancement in public transport, exponentially reducing the speed of transit between two cities. To give you a perspective of how fast this can travel, let me show you a map of the state in, a U in the U.S. So, I'm going to show you a map of California. So, we have... We can cover the distance from Los Angeles to San Francisco, a distance of approximately 381 miles in a span of 30 minutes, because this Hyperloop travels at approximately 700 kilometers per hour. It's crazy and unbelievable to a certain extent. LA to Santa Cruz or even San Francisco would take a minimum of eight hours through a public transport if you're going to take a Greyhound bus. Even a flight would take two to three hours, but this Hyperloop can reduce the distance from eight hours to a mere 30 minutes. This can revolutionize public transport once and for all because it reaches speeds of up to 700 kilometers. It's unbelievable and unimaginable to see the potential of humans once this begins to open and start running. So now let's talk about the science behind this. How does the system work? So, Tesla announced this project a couple of years ago, and they listed a few barriers to the current public transportation system. To deeply understand this, I want you to think of how sound travels. So, suppose we walk into a room and we say something, we yell. Sound travels from our mouth, from our vocal cords, across the room. Right? However, sound can be heard clearer and louder in a quiet room as opposed to a loud room because the quietness and the lack of any other barriers allows the sound to travel faster and clearer and quicker. So, just like how a quiet room would eliminate the barriers to allow sound to be heard clearer and louder, Tesla listed two barriers of current public transport systems. And the barriers are, the first barrier is friction. And the second barrier is resistance against air. So when the vehicle or the capsule or whatever public transport you're using travels on the road or the tracks, the wheels and the road or track is creating a frictional force, causing the speed of the vehicle to be reduced to a slight amount and resistance against air. When we're moving forward, we're actually pushing air because the direction of the air is opposite the direction of movement. So say you're moving forward and the wind is pushing back against you. So the wind is trying to push you backward, but your, your, direction of in, your intended direction is forward. So even though you're still moving forward, your top speed can't be achieved because of the resistance against air. But the design of the Hyperloop overcomes both of these barriers, enabling greater speeds or possibly even unlimited speeds. So we're going to look at what kind of technology and what kind of systems are used to overcome the barriers. To overcome friction, we're using magnetic levitation technology. And to provide a resistance against air, or so, excuse me, to eliminate resistance against air, there's a vacuum in, in shape. So magnetic lev levitation is also known as maglev. So essentially, rather than fl moving on the pavement or the road or the tracks, the vehicles or capsules will float above the train through two sets of magnets, which we'll look at right now. So in the magnetic levitation, there are two sets of magnets. There's one set of magnets that allows the vehicle to float, thereby eliminating friction. And there's a second set of magnets allowed to move forward. So in this diagram that I've created, we can see that the first set of magnets, there's two alike magnets that repel, 
one laid out on the track and one laid out on the bottom or top in some cases of the capsule. So since alike magnets repel a basic principle of magnetism that we've already learned before, it allows the vehicle to float above the track, completely eliminating friction. And there's also one magnet attached to the front of the capsule and one magnet at the destination or the end point. And this allows, the, these are two unlike magnets, so they attract each other and, and the capsule begins moving towards the end point or the destination. So just to recap one more time, one of the sets of magnets, one of one magnet is laid out on the bottom of the capsule or the top, and another magnet is laid out on the track, and these two are like magnets, so they repel and they allow the capsule to float. And then we also have two sets of unlike magnets, opposite magnets that attract each other, that are strategically placed, one in front of the Hyperloop capsule and the other one towards the destination point. So these magnets attract each other and the Hyperloop capsule begins moving towards the end point. So to overcome air resistance, which is a major concern to achieve high speeds, is a vacuum. So when a vehicle travels or a human travels, as I mentioned earlier, it pushes against the direction of the air to move forward. But this pushing creates drag which results in lower speeds. But the Hyperloop, the capsule travels, as you can see here, in an airtight vacuum. And a vacuum has no flow of air, which eliminates any possibility for drag. So you can see that it's in a completely airtight seal, almost like a funnel or a tube. And it travels inside that tube to completely eliminate any possibility for air resistance. So through this innovative design and technology, we're completely eliminating, first we're eliminating friction through the maglev, and through this vacuum, which you can see here, we're also eliminating wind resistance. So now to do a quick recapulation, we've already overcome the barrier of friction, and we've also overcome the resistance against air through the vacuum. So now we have overcome both barriers that are preventing us from achieving greater speeds in public transit. So now the possibilities are limitless. However, every good idea does have drawbacks. Hyperloops are very expensive projects. They can cost up to $6 billion USD to just connect two cities. Also, the experience and overall safety of the passengers inside is not certified. We're not aware of how traveling at 700 kilometers per hour could affect the passengers. Testing is a difficult procedure and the research and development is still in process. And persistent maintenance is very crucial for an idea like this. Because these projects, these vehicles run on state-of-the-art technology, which also means that there's possibility of any sort of malfunction. Even if there's a slightest crack in the airtight vacuum, it could lead to a complete disaster. Even if one of the magnets is slightly displaced, it could re lead to a major disaster. So unless maintenance is continuously provided around the clock, we can't go ahead with this activity because the effects could be devastating. So in the next video, we're going to be looking at a few practice questions. Some prominent companies that are working on this project is Virgin Hyperloop One. They have, as of now, made the most progress but I'm sure that as time, as time flows by, we'll be seeing more and more companies. So why do we need this? What can this do? This will revolutionize public transport once and for all. Traveling cross-country will no longer be a hassle, and economic hubs and hotspots and economic cities will be seamlessly connected through this Hyperloop system. So for decades, a major concern for employment and connecting people has been transportation. It's hard to meet people when it takes almost a full day to travel across the world or across the country. This will make traveling across the country a one, one to two hour task. And we humans will be more productive as a major portion of our time is spent traveling and commuting. So this will really remove the burden off your shoulders for frequent commuters and also, it's very environmental friendly. 
So latest advancements, plans of a version 1 Hyperloop have been approved by the Indian government for a route from Pune to Mumbai. And there's also plans of a Tesla-based Hyperloop that have evolved from NYC to Washington, D.C. So clearly progress is being made, but as far as construction goes, we really no countries have fully started yet. They're still working on the research and development, but I'm sure that in the next 50 years. So we'll, do, we'll be doing practice questions in the next video, but as of now, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a great day and had a learning experience.